Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Actuary, and I know quite a few of you guys have been requesting videos for CT4, CT6, and CT8. Um, here are going to be the CT4 videos. So this is Chapter 1. It's called The Principles of Modeling, and it's quite an ugly chapter to start the course off with because, as you're going to see, there's quite a lot of theory involved. Um, I mean, the chapter starts off with having to know the key steps of setting up a model. And there's 14, I mean, can I fit it all on the one page? There's 14 different steps. And there have been exam questions that have asked you to recall these 14 steps, but not just recall them, but to apply them to a specific scenario. And it is quite challenging. But, but... You must learn this because this is very much um, a core principle of actuarial science. So this 14 steps, don't you know, learn it like, oh, this exam so hard. Learn it as in this is 14 things that are I'm going to be using when I start working one day. Um, so very important. You can pause the video, read through it, but that should all be in your notes. You should have bought the course um, combined material pack from ActEd website, acted.co.uk, buy that stuff. Um, you're not going to pass without it. Also get the flashcards, they're very helpful. Um, anyway, back to chapter one of CT4. Um, also, it's very good to look at what are the benefits of having a model, how they can compress a long time frame interval into something very short so you can predict time. Um, they can do simulation models, they can cope with complicated systems, you can compare different futures, like if I did this, what would happen? If I did that, what would happen? And what it allows you to do with a model is you can control conditions, and this means that variance gets reduced, and it's just, you, you know, the models are cool, you get a nice happy face. But there are also some drawbacks to models, they're not perfect, amazing things. Okay, they take a lot of time and money to, to develop. You need to be very smart to create them. They can give you a full sense of security because the output looks all impressive. Um, they rely on data and assumptions, which could be wrong, you know, and garbage in, garbage out. And you can't take into account every single possible future because, yeah, you just can't. You know, anything can happen in this life. So... Models are not perfect, so just be aware of that. Um, next in the chapter, you're going to be learning about what's the difference between stochastic and deterministic. Essentially, deterministic uses one set of inputs. All the calculations are going to be the same. You run it once, you get your output, job done. Stochastic, it's a little bit more complicated than that because your input parameters may vary with a probability distribution, which means your output is going to vary, and you're going to have to run this many times, up to a thousand times, because you're going to get all these different things, and your output will be a distribution, which you can then use statistics um, to analyze. So that's why you need CT3 before you can really have a good crack at CT4. So try and do the courses in order of the numbers. I know you can do CT7 from the beginning, but the rest, try to do them, you know, do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then eight. Um, yeah, do them in that order. So yeah, that's just some more stuff. And then there's this whole thing of Monte Carlo simulation. Um, this was also quite a, quite a big question that they can ask you is, when is it suitable to use a model? And you need to think of well, what is, what's the objectives of the exercise? How do I validate that the model's correct, the data's right, the assumptions aren't wrong? Um, I then need to think of the various things that can go wrong. What, what do I need to be aware of? Um, then there's this whole thing called correlation, which, I mean, there's a whole subject on it just as well. So you can see CT4, they're packing in a lot in Chapter 1. Um, you can also look at credibility, ease of use, and cost of buying the model. But it's very important to learn this stuff and relate it to the question. So you can't just, this isn't school where you learn seven points and then in the exam they're like, what are the seven points? And you write out the seven points. No, they're going to give you a scenario and you're going to have to know these seven points. But you can't just write them out. You have to relate them to the question, show that you understand them. So don't just learn this off by heart. Understand what you are learning. 
Um, then there's a whole bunch of stuff on long-term modeling difficulties. Um, I mean, you can read about this this chat this video is just to show you what's actually in this chapter. Uh, purpose of model validation. It does get a bit boring. Let's let's you know let's not lie here. Um, but it is essential information that you de do need to know. Turing test, they're quite cool. They're, um, you know, they use it to see if a computer has self-awareness and all that type of stuff in the movies. Um, but we use it to t see if an expert can tell the difference between model data and real-world data. So what you might do is um, get a lawyer to make a judge or, you know, make a case. The, co the model makes a case and then someone in the legal profession says which one was made by the lawyer and the judges and which one was made by the statistics and if they can't tell the difference then you've got a very good model. Uh, then there's this whole thing known as sensitivity analysis. This, I mean some people will spend the entire actuarial career doing sensitivity analysis. Um, what happens here is you just change, you tweak, tweak a few things here and there and you see how what the output is. So if you just like change the interest rate on your model and the output changes drastically, then you know that your model is very sensitive to interest rates. But if you change say inflation and it doesn't really change that much, then you know it's quite robust against that parameter. Um, and then finally with modeling, there's the whole thing about communication and documentation. And this is so important that there's an entire exam on it called CA2 where you make a model and then you communicate and you document it. So it is a boring chapter. There is a lot to read. Um, I have skimmed through the material quite quickly. But don't let it put you off. CT4 is a lot of fun, very difficult. So do focus on it. Um, and yeah, hopefully... These videos, like I say, it, it's a little bit, I don't think I'm qualified enough to, to go into too much of the mathematical details as, as I'd like to. So these videos are just going to be giving a very broad introductory to the chapters. Um, and you're going to see later why. Because Kolmogorov differential equations are, they're a thing of their own. But yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe. I will be uploading CT4 videos um, along with CT1 and CA1. And then once those are all done, I'll get to CT6 and CT8. And sure, one day we're going to have all, all the actuarial videos done. And then I can go on holiday. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.